Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I've, this is the first painting I've done for about three weeks or so. I've been working hard on the digi digital painting on my website and Christmas has been and gone. But today I thought it's time to get back into the painting. This started off as an acrylic painting. I wanted to put on uh, an acrylic wash for the ground uh, and then paint it in oils. Things didn't quite go to plan though, so let's just have a look at uh, how I got on. So this painting is going to be a reworking of a digital painting I did a while ago, probably about a year ago actually, and it was painted in Art Rage on the iPad, I think. Uh, I'm not too sure about that now, but I think so. So what you're looking at now is the original painting. Uh, and I wanted to reproduce this in oils. So I'll just move that out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And I've got a little bit of um, burnt umber uh, on the brush there. I'm using a number two brush. And I'm just sketching in the uh, figures to start with. I thought, get them in the right place. And then the rest should be easy. Uh, so what I thought I would do, I would the, the plan was to get the whole of the canvas covered with acrylic. And there's two reasons for this uh, that I, I decided to do this today. It was one, I hadn't coated the canvas with uh, gesso or gesso. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I usually put a couple of coats of white gesso on the canvas just so that the uh, paint moves around, the oil paint moves more freely on the canvas. But I hadn't done this one, I just unwrapped it. And I thought, if I do, if I use acrylic, I can get a ground wash on, it'll dry really, really quick, and um, I'll be able to start painting in oils on it after about an hour. And hopefully, it will. the acrylic will have sealed the canvas. So that was the plan. That was um, what I intended to do. So you can see I've got the figures in there and I'm just sort of measuring out each of the parts. And I do make quite a glaring mistake, actually. You'll, you'll see it in a minute or two. I'll point it out when it comes along, although I probably won't need to point it out at all. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna do um, some of the video will be in real time like I'm doing now so you can see how I'm working and then I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit uh, once I'm sort of sort of just doing repetitive work and then uh, I'll slow it down again so you're gonna get sort of um, clips all the way through it where it's sort of real time and then there'll be um, slowed down uh, sorry speeded up uh, versions where it just sort of whizzes through a little bit. So I'm, as you can see, I'm just sort of sketching that in. I want to do a little bit more sketching because you can see that uh, here I'm actually putting, sketching in some of the dark tones or the shadows. And you'll probably notice I've made one brush mark which causes quite a few problems and that's that horizontal the diagonal brush stroke that's um, just left of that semicircle it should start at the bottom of that circle semicircle and it doesn't I took it to the edge of that green um, it's that's copper i believe that's like the verdigris on the copper that's discolored it uh so that sort of copper um covering uh, that is the actual waterfall this was a lovely bright sunny day uh but they didn't have the waterfall switched on so you don't see any of the water but you can see i've made that mistake and that uh gives me a few problems for quite a while i can't understand why uh, when I'm drawing that shadow, it seems so elongated on my uh, painting. I thought the canvas I'm using isn't that different to the original, but um, it does. I'll whisk through the drawing a little bit here, and um, I'll stop again 
when something interesting happens. That's the initial uh, sketching done. You'll see I've got all those animals and, and fish on the ground. I've just put them in really, really loose and I'll probably change them uh, as I'm going. I'm still looking at that shadow underneath that uh, copper canopy and it's driving me mad. I start to uh, block in some of the shadows now. And I'm fiddling around with this little two inch brush, uh, sorry, number two brush. I don't know why, because I, I normally work with uh, much bigger brushes than that. So I was, I'm looking around now for a, a bigger brush, um, get a, a bit of a wash on there and start um, coating these uh, shadows in with this much bigger brush so I can move a lot quicker and you can see I've got the paint really thin and I'm using a glazing medium uh, from Windsor and Newton it's for acrylics and basically it uh, thins the paint without it getting too runny it's, it's still got quite a bit of body about it I do use a sort of a combination of this glaze and water to get some sort of textured effects on it but that's why the paint's so thin because i'm using this glazing medium i really like it and um i'm thinking yeah this is going really really well i'm loving the earthy colors of this burnt sienna so my palette for the old painting uh, was fairly standard really i used i used burnt umber and that's what i'm um i did the drawing with i think i may have said um raw umber before but i actually used burnt umber for that drawing i've used a tiny bit of um burnt sienna as well what i'm using now for the uh, for those uh, the wall of the waterfall that's yellow ochre and that features predominantly throughout the painting i'm using lots of uh, yellow ochre uh and the main blue i'm using is cobalt blue and the there's kind of a purple cast to the all of the painting and i mix that with cobalt blue quinacridone violet and um a little bit of burnt sienna as well so th those were the main colors there and i also used a little bit of th uh, thalo turquoise and that was to do the canopy on the waterfall and um, a tiny bit of ultramarine marine blue to get some cooler darker shadows on the people and then obviously some titanium white and oh and the bag the guys carry in that was cadmium red so that is the old palette i'll just go through those colors again we have got um yellow well let's start with the browns we've got burnt umber burnt sienna yellow ochre cadmium red quinacridone violet and then the blues was cobalt blue ultramarine blue phthalo turquoise uh, and then a oh I, di I didn't mention lemon yellow i used a tiny little bit of lemon yellow just to get some sort of uh, brighter yellows on the waterfall and then the titanium white so that was the palette and you can see there i'm just sort of um putting in a nice delicate wash over the whole of the uh canvas still haven't noticed yet the this glaring mistake with the shadow uh, and i'm still totally intent on this being an oil painting i'm just getting in this um initial ground because i don't normally do acrylic paintings i'm i, I prefer to do oils but i was just sort of 
I uh, thought this would be a good quick way to get me into doing uh, getting into the painting proper as it were so sort of mixing uh, colors on the canvas and I'm just going to um, I was going to say I'm going to whiz it through, but I don't think that's a good idea because you're going to get to see me um, messing about and mixing colours on the canvas really with this with this wash, because if you look at the thumbnail, you'll see on the foreground there's lots and lots of colours happening and they're all sort of blending together, and I really want to uh, I really want to let you see that just cleaning the, uh, the brushes a bit that. The thing with acrylic is you do have to keep your brushes immaculately clean all the time. Don't leave them for a minute, otherwise they're gonna to be totally ruined and brushes aren't uh, cheap. So you can see now I'm getting on a, a real thin wash. This is actually thinned down with water and I'm just sort of painting between the shapes of, of the fishes and dinosaurs and things that this street artist has painted on the ground i didn't actually say that bit did i the uh, weird animals that are on the ground had been painted in front of the waterfall by an artist that i suppose had been commissioned by the uh, local council the derby council to do and people were walking all over it and i thought oh, this is going to be gone in a few days i want to capture it and turn it into something a bit more permanent so that's what sort of inspired me uh, to do the painting because I, I really like the idea and I, I thought it looked absolutely great. Now you can see I'm getting a bit bold with colours and I'm just sort of I put a bit of um, I think that was quinacridone violet on there and then I just, it's thinned down a lot and then just sort of push the colours together in with that um, burnt umber and um, yellow ochre colours and the color, I'm just letting the colours mix together as I'm painting them on. So they give this real cool scumbled look. It's not a flat finish to the all of the ground. It's It sort of gives some texture. I mixed a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue in there, which is giving us that dark colour. In fact, that's probably a little bit too dark. And then I go in. It's not too dark for the finished painting, but it's a bit dark at this stage. I want to sort of keep all the tones fairly similar. And then I'm going to, uh, the idea was I was going to glaze over it with the oil paints to um, sort of add all of the shadows and things. So you can see already these animals that I've sketched in are pretty much disappearing. Uh, but I just wanted to get them in so that um, I, I make sure I could fit them all on. I'd get every, I'd got everything sketched out, pretty much accurate, not accurate, but in the sort of in the right place. All the proportions were right for um, for everything. So I don't, I'm not worried that they are going to sort of get washed out with this wash that I'm putting on now uh, and pretty much disappear. I'm going to. Um, just paint them in again uh, with some uh, white uh, color a little bit later on got a nice violet color that's sort of the cobalt blue mixed with the uh, quinacridone violet there going on and i'm just sort of letting the colors blend together and sort of pushing there and i'm getting sort of strong color as i'm coming into the foreground I was just checking there that I wasn't in the way of the camera. Just mix it. I, I had to um, clean the palette fair, fairly frequently actually because I was using, a, I've got a glass palette which is great because I can just scrape off the dry paint and I'm not putting a massive amount of paint out at any one time, but it does sort of dry on that glass really quick. And I felt that um, I needed to clean the canvas every 
15 minutes or so i just use my palette knife to scrape off all the dry paint wipe it clean with a, a tissue and uh, it just meant that i was working on a nice clean piece of glass i could have kept working over the the dry colors i guess really but i just wanted to keep it uh, nice and clean and so a little bit of um house management there you see how thin those colors are that really is just a sort of a a colored glaze just sort of scrubbing them colors in making sure i've got um everything covered on the canvas i don't think you can see it very clearly in the painting but there were uh, places where the water because i thinned it down that much was actually running down the canvas and i'd sort of uh, smudge it out a little bit really go, going in with some strong color there getting quite brave popped a little bit of blue in. i was really enjoying this and i knew that that this was going to dry really quick where as if i was to do this in oils i would be that would be it job done for today put the painting to one side and i've got to leave it and i've kind of been reluctant to paint in acrylics because people can say oh it dries too quick you haven't got time to work your paint but i've I found out in the style that i work with i've got plenty of time i'm not blending and um uh, that's not sort of my style where I spend a lot of time blending but I do like to sort of put glazes on top of glazes and then when I'm working uh, digitally uh, quite often I will uh, create a a layer over a painting and then add another color uh, that um, just sort of cover it doesn't cover over the colors underneath it just sort of um, it's like a translucent layer where you, that you can see through so you can sort of put shadows on and things like that so i like to kind of paint like that and um straight away i can see that i'm going to be able to do do that here so i thought right now i've got this foreground in i need to chunk up this shadow underneath the canopy on the waterfall so i'm thinking let, let's stick with this same sort of palette um and just paint that that in there we go and i think i still haven't realized this mistake i i've it's got to come to me soon you can see i've got the shadow uh, way over to the uh, left nope i've not spotted it not spotted it yet happily in my ignorant or happy in my ignorance as it were so i'm i'm liking the balance i'm getting notice how the shadow is very similar in tone to the foreground at the bottom right so i've only used the two brushes so far in the old painting i actually only use three brushes i use a number one to paint in the fishes and the animals in the white and a little bit of detail on the uh, people then i'm using a number two brush and then that round brush i guess that's a number eight or something like that so i've got a real thin wash this is so it's just pretty much the same color as the shadow but i've just got it really really thin just to put a, a, a glaze over the canvas and i love the way the canvas shines through I use the same color for the um, buildings that are behind here. 
And that's it. I've now got some colour over the all over the canvas. Oh, apart from that little end of the canopy, which is going to uh, get a, a nice green on it. But, uh, uh, first, I'm just sort of coating that in with the pink. So at that point, I could now have um, put my brushes away or put my acrylics away, I should say, and look at painting it in oils. But I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to, I'll keep going and I'll do the next layer in acrylics and then I'll just put a bit more detail in it and then I will uh, switch over to oils. I'm mixing up a little bit of colour for that canopy now, a bit of the green. So I'm using uh, Thalo tur turquoise with that with some white and a, a little bit of, um, if I remember rightly, yellow ochre just to sort of knock it back a bit. And I just want to take time here to say if you're enjoying the video, a big thumbs up would be much appreciated. Helps me out a lot. And if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because I'm making uh, lots of videos like this. I'm trying to commit myself to doing one video a week. So if you um, click the uh, subscribe button and, and uh, tick the notification, uh, bell you'll get notified every time I release a new uh, painting and then mostly it will be in oils now acrylics and pastels and some watercolors watercolors used to be my main uh, medium uh, it isn't the, these days I don't paint so much watercolors anymore uh, but it was for a long time so I, I will be doing some watercolors but mainly paintings like this and a lot of them will be uh, reworkings of digital paintings I've done so if you want to uh, check those out they're over on my main channel which is Steve Elliott Art uh, if you look for that there's a link in the description below obviously and a link at the end of the video uh, where you can go and see all the paintings I do digitally and there's there's hundreds of those I've been doing that for quite a while now uh, now look at that I've at last spotted the error um, where I'd got this shadow completely wrong and I'm so happy now that I'm uh, painting that out and correcting that glaring glaring mistake Whew. so at that point I can um, speed the video along a little bit I wanted to wait until I'd done that so you could see it. But now I'm just going to speed it through a little bit and then I'll come back and talk to you uh, in a while.
here you can see I'm painting in the animals and I'm using my old sign writing techniques from when I was a sign writer many years ago. I'm using a, a mole stick, that's the red stick in my hand that uh, I'm using to rest on and I'm using a number one brush just to paint in those uh, shapes. Just helps me keep a really steady hand and I'm doing them freehand. I'm not uh, the initial pencil or the initial brush lines I got in have all disappeared. So I'm just sort of looking at the reference image, which is the one that you, that's on the screen now. And I'm just sort of taking my time with that number one brush, painting in the um, these animals and fish um, heads and tails and uh, bones and things and I'm not using pure white it's uh, mixed with a little bit of the green but it's fairly thick I, I, I do use a little bit of the glazing medium medium just so it flows off the brush nice and you can see there I'm getting nice uh, steady strokes by using that mole stick so I do recommend using a, a mole stick especially if you've got a bit of a shaky hand like I have um, yeah, and then I do um, go up to the number two brush because there you can see on the uh, back of that rabbit or whatever it is, um, as the uh, animals come closer, the lines become thicker and I'm having to sort of go over them twice with that brush.
So at some point I'd uh, made the decision that I was just going to keep going with acrylics and not use oils at all. Um, I don't know when that was. It just sort of evolved that way. And now I'm just putting the final touches to the painting. So what you can see now, I've used that glazing medium and I've tinted it really, really lightly. And I'm putting on this delicate glaze over those fish and all the foreground, them fish bones. And I'm going to put a couple of coats on like that. And I don't know if you can see but um, it just darkens it all up a little bit and it adds shadows and depth to the painting. So I pretty much go over um, anywhere where I think there needs to be some shadows. I glaze over and just sort of put this. First of all, there's a, a bit of a magenta tint going on and then I add some more blue to it uh, to um, make it a bit cooler. I put a, a few shadows on the people and um, basically just continue like this until um, I'm happy with the look. And as it's drying, because it dries so quick with it being acrylic, um, I can just keep going over it and layering it and layering it until I get exactly the right um, tone of um, shade and colour that I want. So that's it. I've put the last glaze on. I did two or three coats on the bottom part uh, where the foreground was and you can see that has uh, darkened up the white fish scales quite considerably. So the, the beautiful thing about that is you get all these nice brush strokes um, showing through the white and it looks as though it all belongs to as part of the painting. I'm just deciding where to sign it now. I was going to put it on the left side, but I thought, no, it doesn't work. I'm going to put it on the right hand side. So I've got my trusty mole stick, uh, number one brush, and just get that signed, put in the final finishing touches to my painting. And I have to say, I think my um, acrylic painting definitely holds up 
against my uh, digital one. And there we go. That is it. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I presume if you're still with me right now, because it's the end of the video, you have. If you have, big thumbs up is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Bye.